my freezer does not want to close. It's not difficult to close the freezer, but it just seems like if you ask the freezer what it wanted to do, it would always choose to stay open. Does that make sense? Basically, the whole fridge tends to work its way up against the wall and the doors get stuck just before they shut all the way. You can actually see the paint wearing off the wall where the freezer door gets stuck. So I've decided after two or three complete literal meltdowns that I'm going to address the problem. I'm going to build something that will let my freezer send me a text message when I accidentally leave it open. I'm going to turn my dumb freezer into a dumb freezer with an internet connection. At this point, you're probably saying, Guy, why not just learn to check the freezer door after you close it? That would be a very boring YouTube video, wouldn't it? Let's go with the first option. All right, I want to build this in the quickest, cheapest, simplest way possible. And since it's a fridge-oriented project, I figured why not use magnets? We'll use one of these terrifyingly strong disks to detect when the freezer door is closed. And as a bonus, it will hold itself in place. These go for about a buck each on Amazon, and you, you really don't need one this big or strong. The next piece we'll need is a reed switch. It's hard to tell from this shot, but inside that small glass tube, there are two flexible metal contacts sitting a short distance from each other, like a fraction of a millimeter. When you hold a magnet close to the tube, the two contacts flex and touch each other, allowing a current to flow from one of the exposed terminals to the other. Now, I love these little guys, but they're kind of tricky to work with, and I say that for two reasons. First, the glass is really, really easy to break. You can see here that I eventually figured out that you need to tightly grip the terminals just outside the glass if you want to bend them. Otherwise, you've got tiny shards everywhere. Second, since the contacts are so small and since the tube is a uniform cylindrical shape, it's hard to tell which way you'll have to orient your magnet in order to close the switch. I'd highly recommend testing your setup before permanently mounting the switch anywhere. The plan at this point is to attach the magnet to the inside of the freezer door and mount the switch somewhere on the freezer's roof. When the door is closed, they'll sit just close enough for the magnet to hold the switch closed as well. When the door opens and the attached magnet swings away, the circuit will break. So we'll need something to tell us when that circuit stays open for a certain amount of time. If it stays that way for like three minutes or so, it's very likely that I've left the kitchen thinking that my job there was done. And that's when things melt. So as usual, we're gonna put a microcontroller in charge. For this project, I'm reaching for an ESP32. This is the same chip that I used for my Wurlitzer Keynote Visualizer project, which if you haven't seen that yet, Go check it out. It's definitely one of my favorite and most intricate builds. However, this time I'll be using the ESP32 for its Wi-Fi capabilities rather than Bluetooth. That's right, it can do both. It's an awesome tool for any wireless project. And I got the board you see here for less than $5 on AliExpress. That's so bonkers to me. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi for less than five bucks. It's also got a built-in battery connector and charging circuit. Super handy all around. But the biggest disadvantage of ordering from overseas is the shipping delay. These can take upwards of a month to get to me in Massachusetts. I should also mention that there are awesome US-based companies like Adafruit and SparkFun that offer similar products as well as really high quality open source code and tutorials. I could not build this stuff without those, honestly. By this point, you've probably realized this is not a project I want to spend a ton of money, time, or energy on, even though I know I'm gonna end up doing all of those things just editing this video after the fact. Um, so the, the choice to include a rechargeable component may seem kind of strange, right? That's gonna require me to put in some effort to plug in the battery once every, hopefully no more than once every few weeks. So why would I do that? Basically, I, I want this project to be an opportunity to learn more about power management, in particular, how to use the various sleep modes. 
on the ESP32. So I'm fairly confident I've designed this system in a way that will only require charges every few weeks, hopefully. Um, the microcontroller only has to do the teeniest bit of work every few minutes. So I, I don't think I'm going to be burning through a 400 milliamp hour battery very quickly, but we shall see. Everything's assembled, and now seems like a good time to talk about the code that's actually running on the ESP32. I'm not going to go through the code line by line. I don't think anyone wants to see that. They'll let me know if you would. Um, so I'm just going to go through it in plain English, and I think in this case it's simple enough where that shouldn't be a problem. Please know the code will be publicly available on GitHub. And I'm using the ESP32 Arduino core, so it should be relatively easy to get up and running. So I have my little lithium ion battery here, 3.7 volts. I got this on Adafruit. And I'm going to plug it into my ESP32. And I'm going to tuck it in here. And now my code is running. The power is on. The first thing my program does is create a flag just a true or false value to keep track of the state of the read switch. In other words, keep track of whether or not the fridge was closed, true, or open, false, last time we checked it. And this flag will stick around even when the ESP32 goes into deep sleep mode. That's super important. Um, and the flag gets set to true at, at first because we're going to assume that we're starting with everything in the right place. Once the flag is initialized, we enter the part of the program that executes every time the device wakes up. So that means anytime we power it on by plugging in the battery, anytime we hit the little reset button, or anytime we come out of deep sleep mode. Immediately after waking up, we check the value of the GPIO pin connected to the read switch. Right away we ask, is it open or is it closed? If the switch is closed, that means the magnet's nearby and the freezer door is closed. 
We set our flag to true and immediately instruct the device to go into deep sleep mode for three minutes. When it wakes up, it will do the exact same thing, starting from when we check the state of the switch. So if the freezer door never moves, this thing will just infinitely wake up, check the switch, go to sleep for three minutes until the battery just dies. Now, let's say the switch was open, implying that the freezer door is also open. In this case, I do something different right away. There's a tiny little LED light on here, which I flash quickly in this case. This is actually not critical to the functionality, but it is super helpful when debugging and trying to calibrate the setup when I'm actually placing this on the fridge. For example, I can repeatedly hit the reset button as I, as I move the magnet around on the fridge. And as soon as I hit it and don't see a light, that means the magnet's holding the switch closed and things are positioned well. But back to the program. At this point, we know the switch is open, the LED has flashed. However, we don't know exactly how long the freezer has been open. Somebody could have just reached in quick for a midnight burrito at the exact moment the device checked the state of the GPIO pin. In this case, it would be completely inappropriate to sound any alarms. This is where our flag comes in. We know that if the flag is set to true, then either the device just powered on or as of three minutes ago, the freezer door was properly closed, meaning it's still a little too early to panic. So what we do now is we set the flag from true to false, which puts us in kind of a warning mode, and we go back to sleep for three minutes. But what if our flag was set to false? That means that as of three minutes ago, the freezer door was open, and we know it's open now, which means it's very, very likely that our freezer door has been open for at least three minutes. So it's time to freak out. The ESP32 immediately connects to Wi-Fi, fires off an alert, and then just kind of idles until I come back to reset it. For alerts, I'm using a service called If This Then That, or IFTTT, which, if you've never used it, um, is a really awesome way to hook up generic web requests, which is what I'm making from this thing, to services that you probably already use. You can configure it to send a text message, send an email, turn on your smart lights. There are so many options. And the cool thing is you don't have to change the code that's running on here to change the behavior. You can just use their app or their website. Highly recommend it if you've never used it before. And that's really all there is to it. I spent $12 and maybe two hours getting it all to work. And after running it for a while, it appears the battery life is a little bit more than three weeks, which I'm totally happy with. I could always extend it with a bigger battery or by making the sleep interval longer, but I don't think that's worth the effort. Admittedly, I have not gotten any real alerts yet, but we haven't had any meltdowns either. So jury's still out on whether or not any of this was worth it. Anyways, thank you for watching. I always appreciate your time. I've got a few bigger projects lined up to help get me through the winter, so check back here and on my Hackaday IO page for updates. I'll be posting the source code and more detailed build instructions there as well. I'll uh, post the link down below. Bye.